welcome to the short stuff i'm josh and there's chuck and this is short stuff the mysteries of genetic mutations edition that's right because uh we're gonna talk about the x-men yeah a, mu a mutation i mean i don't know if it would help you join x-men but there are mutations that alter people sometimes in positive ways we usually associate it with negative stuff like a, mm -hmm. a congenital disease or something a lot of them are neutral i think actually the vast majority are neutral they don't really have any noticeable effect some are beneficial lactose intolerance immunity to malaria uh, when someone's vestigial tail turns into a glorious full tail those are all beneficial genetic mutations but all of them share something in common and that is that the, the re replication of the person's genome had some sort of error while it was being copied. Is lactose intolerance a beneficial No, uh, lactose tolerance. I think you, I thought you said intolerance. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, so lactose intolerance is apparently the, the, the baseline, the uh -huh. default. Lactose tolerance is from a genetic mutation. All right. Uh, well, let's get into this. Let's talk about DNA. Uh, or deoxyribonucleic acid, as we all like to call it. That's such a great word. Around the campfire. Um, that's a molecule that's going to carry genetic material, I almost said mutation, mm -hmm. uh, when you're developing uh, as a, as a f uh, future human. And uh, structurally, I think we, we've all seen the, um, if you've seen Jurassic Park, you've seen what these double, uh, this double helix looks like. It's a long molecule comprised of nucleotides and uh, there been, you know, there's two strands to that coil that form the double helix mm -hmm. uh, that kind of wind around each other. And that's that's what the DNA, um, the full DNA, what would you call it? Just molecule looks the, like the genome. Yeah, the molecule DNA is a molecule. Yeah. And you said it, man, it is long. Apparently, if you stretched it out, it would be about two meters or six feet tall. If yeah. you could figure out how to stretch it out. It's amazing. And it's made of 3.1 billion base pairs of nucleotides, thymine, cytosine, guanine, and uh, adenine. And adenine goes with thymine and cytosine goes with guanine. And you put all that together, just with those combinations, you have a, a, a galaxy of different um, code that's embedded into the DNA that serves as how like it tells the rest of your body each cell what it's supposed to do and how to do it and usually that has to do with expressing proteins yeah uh and you know like you mentioned as the cells divide and the dna is making copies of itself uh, there might be errors here and there and that's where those mutations come from uh in the egg if they're in the egg and sperm cells that those are going to be uh passed on to the next generation so that's a genetic mutation that's going to uh, carry on and cause disease or genetic disorders. Mm -hmm. uh, you can also have uh, what's called a somatic mutation, and that only affects you. It's not inherited by your future kids. Right, exactly. Um, so really the big problem is genes, like a gene not being replicated correctly. And a gene is just a stretch of nucleotide base pairs along your genome that's, that together uh, shows how to encode a protein. It's the instructions to how to do a specific thing. And again, it's just a, a segment along your, your DNA. Um, and when that stuff gets copied, if there's any kind of error, like say you match up a, an adenine to a cytosine, mm -mm. It, it's going to prevent that, that, that cellular process that, that whatever the gene is telling the cell to do to not be able to per, be performed correctly, hence a mutation. Yeah, and our cells are constantly uh, copying themselves, either replacing old cells or damaged cells. And when that happens, when they're doing that copy, that double-stranded DNA is going to split into the two parts, mm -hmm. and each strand is copied on its own, and then they come back together. And when that happens, there can be errors. Uh, the good news is uh, it's approximately one in every 100 million replications this happens. So that's a, you know, that's a pretty good statistic to, to have in your hip pocket. Um, the other good news is uh, DNA knows what it's doing. So it generally knows when an error happens, and they try to and often can repair and correct that before any problems arise. Yes. Um, I think that's a pretty good place to take a break, Chuck. So let's take a break, Chuck. Let's do it. Okay, 
Okay, so there's basically two ways that you can, uh, that a genetic mutation can develop. The cell replication, which we've talked a lot about, and then environmental influences. Um, and there's actually different ways that can happen even during cell replication. Um, there's tautomeric shifts, which is where the nucleotide itself undergoes a, a quick chemical reaction to where suddenly adenine turns into, um, I don't know, silver, just for a second, and then it eventually turns back. But if that, if that adenine nucleotide is being copied at that moment, you're going to have a silver um, nucleotide in your DNA, and yeah. silver just don't work when it comes to making proteins. Yeah, so that's sort of due to bad timing. Uh, another thing that can happen as far as those errors go is uh, it's called mispairing. And was this a How Stuff Works article? Yes, it was. Yeah, they, they did a pretty good job of putting this in terms we could understand. If you imagine those two DNA strands that uh, work together are zipped together like a zipper, mm -hmm. sometimes that zipper doesn't align. Your and your penis gets stuck in it. Oh, my God. And that, that can happen uh, when the DNA is getting zipped back up. And that can cause part, uh, parts of it to be skipped over or maybe something added that shouldn't be. Right. And then um, the third way that a mutation can happen during replication is what's called jumping genes, cousins of jumping jacks. Um, <laughs> and that is where, so these genes are normally, I don't understand this fully, but genes, which again are just stretches of code on your DNA, can actually move. They can change positions. They can change places. Sometimes they replicate themselves, and, and the, the replicant goes and embeds itself in another segment of your DNA. And if it does so in a gene, another gene, then it's going to mess up that gene's ability to, per, to perform its function. I did not know that that was a thing. Did not either. Had never heard of jumping genes. I've heard of jumping beans and jumping jacks, but never jumping genes. Very nice. Uh, so that's the the ways uh, that can happen as far as like an error occurring in your body right? Uh, on a cellular level. You mentioned external factors. Um, one of the big ones, and I didn't know to this extent even, is um, is radiation. And you might be thinking like, yeah, so you, you just don't get x-rayed uh, when you're pregnant. Like that solves everything, right? Uh, that's not necessarily the case because UV radiation can be a very big cause of – uh, mutations, um, specifically um, when it, it's called like a sunburn on your DNA. Mm -hmm. um, if you have too much UV radiation, uh, you can they can form something called, uh, how would you say that? I'm Pyr going to say pyrimidine dimers. Pyrimidine dimers? Mm -hmm. uh, and I looked, I was like, is that a misprint? Is it supposed to be dimers? And nope. No, it's dimers, mm -hmm. uh, and especially thymine dimers that can distort that DNA structure, and that's sort of like uh, a sunburn on the DNA, and that happens when a couple of DNA building blocks uh, are stuck together, right. and that's oftentimes caused from, you know, sun exposure. Yeah. Um, there's also uh, chemical factors, too, which are basically biological or environmental factors Essentially what it is is there's different kinds of chemicals that can make their way into the DNA in the nucleus of a cell and just mess with it. Sometimes they mimic nucleotides and they get pulled in uh, like, a, like a, just some guy walking down the street getting pulled into the Jimmy Fallon late night show because they couldn't get enough people to fill seats. <laughs> that can happen during <laughs> DNA um, reproduction, replication. And when that, that nucleotide that didn't mean to be there uh, gets entered into the the, um, the new code of DNA, it, again, problems arise. That's a mutation. The problems arise when they have to sit there and watch Jimmy Fallon. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, boy. I'm, I'm going to hear it. Uh, there are also bi uh, biological factors um, like a virus uh, can cause, that can get in the DNA, yeah. and that can lead to mutations. Uh, and then there's some other environmental stuff as well, right? Yeah, um, deanimating agents, they actually remove parts of our DNA. Um, substances like stuff found in cigarette smoke can stick to yeah. DNA like so much tar um, and change the shape of the DNA. Essentially, you don't want anything going anywhere near your DNA. And if there's something that happens and it happens on an important gene, that, that mutation is going to produce some sort of problems down the line. But our body is actually really, really good at either preventing these errors or correcting them when it finds them, which is just mind-boggling to me. 
Yeah, it, it's super cool uh, that our body can do this. Uh, sometimes it's like a, it's called a direct fix. And these are, these are just small little errors. Like uh, they likened it to a, a, a road crack. And they also likened it to just a quick patch on that road. The cell just directly fixes it super quick like. Yeah, and we should say the cell... The, the the yeah the cell that's transcribing the DNA um, is aware of it because there are different um, different molecules that proofread the the newly created DNA to make sure it matches the original. That's amazing. Yeah, it is. So if they find a mismatch, if they find um, just some stretch, it could be big, small, whatever. They'll actually cut it out, excision. They'll digest it. And then they'll reproduce the correct version of it and, and then connect it to that part that they um, cut out of the DNA and then zip yeah. it together. And if it's uh, if a whole section of DNA gets gets damaged, they can go to other another DNA strand and say, hey, I'm glad you're here because we're going to use you now to come fix this other strand. Yeah. Thank God you're here. They were about to pull us into Jimmy Fallon and we needed something to do. <laughs> That's a off-said thing in my house. Thank God I was here uh, because uh, I know we mentioned War of the Roses, the movie, how it holds up. Mm -hmm. That's one of the great lines from War of the Roses when uh, they are separated, but Michael Douglas is still in the house and the Christmas tree catches fire and he runs downstairs and puts it out and screams, thank God I was here. (laughs) And I say that a lot and just whenever anything dumb happens that I saw for the family, I go, thank God I was here. That's great. That's a great thing. Man, Chuck, everybody loves Chuck (laughs) for reasons like that. Not everybody. Just like Raymond. All those people can go soak their heads. Oh, okay. Thank you. Um, Well, since uh, I think we're out of stuff to talk about, (laughs) short stuff is out. Stuff You Should Know is a production of iHeartRadio. For more podcasts from iHeartRadio, visit the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your favorite shows.